Welcome to the Center for the Study of Social Policies Perspectives on Early Relational Health series. In this first session, we discuss the principles and framework of early relational health, including why it is essential to child and family health and what parents are telling us about healthy early relationships. Welcome everyone. This is the first of a series about perspectives on early relational health. And I'm Dr. David Willis. I'm a developmental behavioral pediatrician and a senior fellow at the Center for the Study of Social Policy. I spent my career working to advance early relational health for child health practice change and for early childhood systems transformation with an intensive and intentional focus on health equity and anti-racist frames. And I've been along this journey, had the incredible privilege to meet my dear friend and colleague, um, Ms. Marietta Collier-Wells. Marietta? Thank you very much, Dr. David Willis. Yes, I'm Marietta Callier-Wells. I am the Self-Enhancement Parenting Program uh, Supervisor and Lead Educator and Facilitator for Self-Enhancement, we call it SEI. Um, I've been working with children and families and building relationship with families and the communities for over 25 plus years. But I've been learning about early relational health of firms and uh, alleviate so much that is important for me and the families I work with. That's great, Marietta. So let me start off first talking about what are we talking about, about this early relational health and a little bit of the science behind it. And then Marietta, I'll come to you for your thoughts and we can talk together. Let me first say that a baby's future starts now, Mm -hmm. be that a pregnancy or right around the birth or those first months. What happens in the relationships around a pregnant mother, a young family, and a new baby really matter. We talk about children developing in that environment of relationships. Those early experiences build brain architecture. They build on the capacities of future health, development, and well-being. All of that is connected. And when we talk about cognitive, emotional, and social capacities, that all comes out of that environment of relationships. Thus, we say that early relationships matter and they shape the health, well-being of the child and the caregiver and are a key driver for social emotional development and well-being in future life. In essence, the definition of early relational health is that it describes the positive and nurturing relationships that advance physical health and development, social well-being and resiliency. But It may be a new term, but it's not a new field. There's been decades of study of research from the fields of child development, infant mental health, neurodevelopment, all of that focus on this this centrality of relationships, the relationships around caregivers and young children and those relationships of a caregiver and that infant are really essential for future health development and social well-being. And we know that it's not just those two individuals, but it's also multi-generational. The supports around a mother, father, and a baby matter. In essence, early relational health is both two-generational and multi-generational in all that we focus on. The providers and the practitioners that help support families all know that the supports around families really matters. This is what we talk about. And in one of our studies we did with the Frameworks Institute, we came to the key message that early relationships are foundational. Those relationships between young children and their caregivers are critical, but it's the supports and the context and the environments around families and these relationships that also matter. The context of the neighborhood, the community, the safety, the security, the amount of food, the amount of of promotion and positivity, are those contextual factors that likewise surround these early relationships. It's all connected in this way. And there's a known continuum of the way we think about early relational health from promotion and prevention in the support of all families in all communities to those situations where we need to be more targeted to support those that are struggling or where we even need to have specific intervention processes if there are people that are struggling or need additional help. We're also learning that early relational health is observable. You can actually see it. And we've been learning intentionally about in the earliest period 
of a, of a caregiver, a mother and father and their baby's relationship, that even in those first weeks or months, we can see what's been called autonomic emotional connection. Mm -hmm. That is those qualities of mutual attraction that a baby and a caregiver have with each other. That mutual vocal expression that one can witness of the vocal um, communication that goes on between a young infant and a caregiver. That most mutual facial expressiveness where a baby is responding to that mother's smile or reaction as is that mother reacting to the facial expressions of that dear baby. And in that sense, there's a sensitivity and a reciprocity that goes on between them. Those qualities are observable. And also over time in that first year to two years, that relational dance is also observable as it develops. The relationship itself has a developmental sequence that's observable. There are patterns that are consistent, describable, and really important. And thereby in that sense, all those that support those wonderful, beautiful relationships are, are witnessing the qualities, the characteristics, and those interactions that define this relational space. And amazingly, in the science of human development, we can see what's been called synchrony. That is biobehavioral synchrony, meaning you can see how a, a caregiver, a parent and a baby can behaviorally interact with each other, that little dance that they do in that taking turns with each other. But under that, there's actually the physiology of the brain and of the heart and of the endocrine systems all become connected to build health in synchrony that gets matched and repaired when there's mismatch. That whole system of the physiological development of relational health is increasingly being understood. And there's a lot of activities that are happening in communities that support relational health, not the least of which is in the child health system. Pediatrics is advancing itself with advancing um, in early in reach out and read, the focus on strong, strengthening strong relational um, experiences that promote the health foundation for early learning. But we're also learning that team, there are team-based care models in primary care pediatrics that have been called out like Project Dulce or Healthy Steps that are where there's a team that focuses on supporting those strong early relational patterns for families. And we're also witnessing that early relational health is advancing in communities, not the least of which is with home visiting or those communities that are beginning to build um, community-based dual care and even parenting programs that recognize that early relations, relationships really matter and that the focus of all that work is supporting communities and families foundationally and early to make all those differences. And we also know that in the field of infant mental health and in the field of early interventions, all of those interventions are relationally centric recognizing again that relational health matters. So when we talk about the power of human connections, we know that we're harnessing that every human relationship matters and helps weather adversity and protect the next generation from harm. The power of human relationships actually though comes from simple, ordinary daily interactions and none of us are perfect in that business. And yet those interactions matter and are helpful and are critically important. So Mariana, that's sort of the foundation of what we're talking about, but I'm wondering if you could share some of your thoughts about what this early relational health is to you and why it's meaningful from your view. Why early relational health is important to me is because people are becoming people again. Uh, their hearts are open, they're being flexible, they're being patient. And the, the butter to it all is to be kind and to be caring and to listen. And, and again, from experiences, why this is important is because as I've shared with a lot of people, yes, I have the degrees and the professional this and that. But what I pull from the most is my sibling order. Um, I am the youngest of quite a few of us. Um, and what we were taught is that in a family, everybody has their responsibility. And I believe that early relational health has a responsibility across all cultures is to uh, create a not just a system, but a total environment and not just one time. This is a daily investment. 
You have to create an environment so that people can trust, that they can be comfortable, that they can feel safe. So early relational health just makes so much sense to me before I even knew that term. It's like I've been doing the definition of it all my life, and now there's a title that goes with it. But guess what? Early relational health and what it means, it's beyond the title itself. It's beyond all of us. It's something that is necessary so that everyone, every child, every family, every community across all cultures can be successful. Could you talk about that a little bit? What do you see with the families you work with as to how this relational health work resonates with them? The, the thing that really excites me, but it also honors not only what we're doing, but it honors across all cultures and the families, is that because of the relationship, because the trust is there, they speak about how much more can be done and how they feel so included when there is a trusting relationship. And in the relationship, so much more can happen because the focus it's, yes, it's about the health, it's about being better, but in the relationship, you can talk about the more difficult things at that time because there is trust and because that voice is heard and they feel that someone cares about them. That's so true, Marietta. And you know, in this moment, things are very tough for families. In this moment of COVID and the triple crisis of the COVID, epi COVID pandemic, yeah. The economic collapse, the, the anti-racist revolution, all of this, the efforts of dismantling racism is really yeah. essential in all of our systems. But you know, I, you and I have had this conversation. And I recognize I'm a white male with unearned privilege, having benefited from racism, white supremacy, that's been all around me along my journey. And I've been really awakened about the importance of thinking about partnering with families in many new ways. And I know I still have um, blind spots, racist blind spots. And you and I know about how important it is for us to have these difficult conversations of where my yes. blind spots or the blind spots of others get in the way of partnering with families. How do you think about this? What are you witnessing and seeing of the families you know that are trying to feel trusted and experienced with others in a way that feels safe and feel affirmed and feel recognized? What are you seeing? What I have been seeing is this from the families and not just seeing, this is what they have shared with me. Um, whenever they are asked, first of all, like if it's for a focus group, when they hear the word focus group, sometimes it creates a barrier itself. So we as professionals, and also, even though we're professional, we're in the relationship also. What happens is we have to trust and listen better. We need to listen out loud and hear what is actually being said and not come with a predisposed agenda. We listen, then we create the agenda. And what happens is when we come back together, when they hear their words, when they hear their voices from what they're saying, that's what makes the relationship even more fortified. That's amazing, uh, Marietta. And I'm curious, you've been along with a number of us as we've been thinking about move, bringing early relational health to, to more families. And we've had active discussions about you know, the importance of trust and the importance of uh, partnering with families. What gives you hope about why this early relational health movement gives that kind of possibility? What are you witnessing? What are you thinking about the what brings you hope about this work? What brings me hope is the fact that even though some of us, we just met each other within the past year, uh, we say COVID is such a horrible thing. I could say it's a great thing also because it has allowed, it has almost forced people to listen to one another, to come together. There are things that are in each and every one of us that we didn't even know. But what happened, a difficult time has ushered it in. It has birthed it out and open so that we can do what we need to do. And the parents have been saying that the kindness and the caring, even though we've been hearing uh, uh, on the news and everything, all the terrible things. But what I listen to is what the families are saying. 
I listened to them and they said, you know, Miss Wells, you know, this has been great. This this situation or this agency or this system has not been there for me before, but they are now. And then they'll say why. And all they can feel is the kindness and the caring. And I think that because of that, this has brought us about a shift. And with the early relational health, it fits right in there. So it doesn't have to be on the outside looking in. It's been in. It's just been afraid to be shared with one another. So what I have enjoyed is watching the parents enjoy early relational health all this time. Now it just has a name for it. That is so inspiring to me. And, you know, I've been listening deeply on my journey to generational and cultural wisdom. You know, that's been held in cultures, it's been held in histories, it's been held in the stories, especially Mm -hmm. of our um, BIPOC and indigenous communities. You know, Mm -hmm. this early relational health movement strives to listen deeply Mm -hmm. to um, the experience of families, listen deeply to the indigenous traditions of some Mm -hmm. communities, listen deeply to the colonizing parenting and to new ways of trying to elevate the capacities of all people. And we're learning together. This is a journey of a paradigm shift and a partnership with families at every level to bring better what has been historically well understood, but also to heal this, the, the, the traumas and the tragedies of the past by the power of relational supports, connections, and possibilities. So I'm really excited about this. So final thoughts you want to bring, Marietta, before we close? Well, I can, I was, I don't, I think you were there, Dr. Willis, the other day we were in this meeting and I heard people talking somewhat about this and they were talking about different types of places that you need to be in to go through this because it's difficult and, and all these different things. All I can feel in my heart is that We haven't had rudiments and steps and systems to go through these difficult things. And what I'm saying, if we have too many of these, if we have too many, what you call it, the scaffolding to hold and support, instead of holding on to the scaffolding, hold on to each other to make it through this. We have to do that. And don't be afraid to hold on to each other. Because that's where the wealth is coming from. That's where early relational health came from. It came from us holding on to each other, that perspective taking. That's not only my agenda, but somebody else's agenda. If their agenda is successful, then mine is. So that is that holding on to each other as we go through the difficult times. Because for this to get done, we're going to have to go through some difficult things. Be a little bit nervous, but you can't be fearful and we're not going to stop. We're going to keep going. And our relationships matter um, for the next generation, holding on to one another, holding and surrounding every new baby and young child, believing in the power of relational health, healing and recovery is what all of this movement is about. It's been fabulous talking together with you. Uh, Thanks again. Oh, you are so welcome.